Okay. Uh, well, while we're on the subject of, you, you had mentioned, uh, Mr. Cohen, taxing people out of the state and prioritizing, um, the cost to the state and local government for the pension system is becoming out of control. According to a recent study, annual New York State pension contributions jumped from $245 million in 2000 to $1.7 billion in 2010. And it has been recommended that the state go from a defined benefit plan to a defined contribution plan. So I would ask you, Mr. Cohen, should, do you agree with that? Should the state change the pension system? Uh, clearly. Um, you know, I have been saying since I started this campaign that we need to address the pension issue in our state because 70 percent of, of the cost of education in this state is made up by pensions, fringes, and salaries. Um, so one of the big issues, obviously, is pensions. If we were to switch to it from, we currently have a defined benefit plan, I favor changing that for all new hires to a defined contribution plan. Um, so that as the years progress, um, you'll have two, three, four percent each year, and hopefully in 10 years, you'll possibly have 40, 50 percent of the new, or you'll have 100 percent of the new people on the new program, and you'll be able to reduce your costs. In addition to that, you actually reduce your costs in another way. Because of the way a defined benefit plan works, when times when the stock market goes up, there's less need um, for the municipalities to actually fund the system. When the stock market goes down, it creates a need, and that's generally in a, in a recession where you're funding it. So you're actually funding and taxing higher when the market goes down. In a defined contribution plan, your funding is even throughout. So if the funding is, say, 5% from the employer and 5% from the employee, it would be consistent. So our local school boards and municipalities would be able to fund that number on an ongoing basis. They'd understand what their cost is. It wouldn't vary. Okay, thank you. Senator Oppenheimer, what's your take on this? If reelected, what would you do? Right. Um, actually, we have sort of a uh, com combined right now uh, plan where we have some defined and we have uh, some contribution. But um, what I would say is that I think it will be happening that we will have to increase our, our employee contribution. And uh, I think that's inevitable because we've run out of money and we're in, we're in problem. We have problems. And uh, we certainly all have to cut down on the abuses. We, we see too many abuses. We see the last three years being stacked. We see double dipping. We see a lot of areas of abuse. We have to crack down on that. We can't have that happen. Um, we did put in Tier 5. Uh, I believe there are more tiers in our future, both this type and that type. And um, there's no question that, that pensions are going to have to be examined. Or everything is going to be on the table. And would you work toward reform for pensions? Yeah, I would even work towards uh, seeing that the, uh, the Senate and the Assembly uh, increase the employee contribution first. And would this be for By new us, hires? I mean the elected officials, would by setting be, an example. Senator, would this be for new employees, or would this be for existing? I think the future tiers will be Tier 5, and I really don't know what will be coming after that, but I do believe you will be seeing it. And okay. I think you'll be seeing it sooner, sooner than later. Okay. Um, Thank you. Um, uh, my next questions, individual for each of you, have to do uh, with some of the ads that have been running in this campaign. Um, and let me start with you, Mr. Cohen. Uh, I saw recently a uh, New Yorkers for Growth ad. In the ad, it makes your opponent look confused, bumbling, unable to answer questions. Uh, and the subject was education reform. Well, I wa went back and I watched the actual Senate floor debate, and it was clear to any naked eye that this thing was maliciously edited. It wasn't a fair representation of what actually happened on the floor. When you were asked about it previously, you said, I was really concerned by what I saw meaning that appeared in the ad. I'm sure by now you've done the due diligence and seen what the actual representation was. Do you condemn that ad right now? Well, first of all, let me point out that I actually have not um, seen the entire video. Um, my feeling, quite frankly, and I'm not quite sure that it was an advertisement 
that you're referring to. I, I have not seen this any This is from the Club for Growth. They put it out. And New while York is that's not growth. from your, excuse me, and while yep. that certainly is not your organization, they're acting in your interests, um, but certainly not a conjunction with your campaign. Nonetheless, That's correct. though, they're, they're obviously having a role in this campaign, this ad, and I'm asking well, from what your I'm, viewpoint how you what view I'm, the what ad. What I just want to point out, Mr. French, is that I don't believe it's an advertisement. Um, at least I haven't seen an advertisement to that extent. Uh, they did release a video uh, that they apparently believed was accurate, um, and that video has turned out to have been edited. Um, but quite frankly, you know, my campaign did not release that video. Um, it, uh, the New Yorkers for Growth is a nonpartisan organization uh, that I have absolutely no control over and, and have not coordinated with in any way or, uh, at all. Um, but I, I want to point out that to me, the real issue is, is not this negative campaigning, because I don't think that negative campaigning is the way that anybody uh, believes that we should, or at least I certainly don't believe that we should be negatively campaigning in an election. There are real issues that are at stake. Um, the finances of our state are in a terrible disarray. We've had incumbents for, in, in Senator Oppenheimer's case, 26 years in office uh, that have not dealt with the problems that we have in this state. I want to talk about the issues, the issues of taxing, spending, borrowing, education, the environment. These are the issues that we need to address in our state. Uh, these kinds of uh, uh, campaigns, to me, are unacceptable. I did not release uh, the video, and the video speaks for itself. Whoever did what they did, they did. Well, I think you just said that since it was edited, it doesn't speak for itself. And my question is, would you ask, even though you don't control the New Yorkers for growth, would you ask them to pull it down now? now that I, you know I that don't it's think edited? it's an advertisement. But, um, well, I even though it's, it's not on, an advertisement. I believe it's on, on YouTube at this point. Um, so, I, you know, I, I would certainly wouldn't have a problem with them pulling it down. Okay. Um, well, as your opponent said, Senator, negative ads um, shouldn't be a part of it, but they are, and your ad against uh, Mr. Cohen certainly has uh, raised more than a few questions. In it, for those who didn't see it, it's titled Slumlord Bob Cohen, and the uh, narrative says, if these buildings could talk, they'd tell of broken latches, broken promises of a slumlord named Bob Cohen who's ignored safety violation after safety violation and left children sick with lead poisoning, and that this Republican can run for office, but he can never run from this, and it shows a decrepit building. Subsequent to the ad running, Westchester County Fair uh, Campaign Practice Committee, a project of the League of Women Voters, um, they said that the ad was, in fact, um, not accurate. They say a mother and child who appear in the spot. Um, they convey a negative image about Mr. Cohen. They, in fact, were never his tenants. A sign was altered to imply that one of his buildings was condemned or closed from the Department of Health and Safety when no agency even existed. And a picture is shown of a boy standing in front of an unfinished wall with a voice saying, left children sick with lead poisoning. The wall, not of his property, and the child, never one of his residents. Do you, if you had to do it over again, would you run this ad? And do you understand the criticism you're getting that it unfairly represented his record? Um, well, as you know, I, I, I certainly support the League of Women Voters, but in this case they were only dealing with the visual. They were not dealing with any of the content, any of the facts. And I'll tell you how I came to this. When my opponent first uh, announced, some tenants of his were calling me. And they were calling me, telling me that, you know, I had to see their buildings, but they wouldn't give me their last names because they were afraid of retribution. Then they wanted me to come down and see. Well, I didn't know who they were, and uh, I didn't have their last names, and I was not going to go meet with them. So what I did is I sent my staff down to the building department, and what we found out is public information. Anyone here can get that same information, and I can give it to you. Uh, there were 600 complaints and violations at the present time. Uh, there were fines paid just in August for about at least a dozen or 15 uh, different uh, violations. Um, there were uh, about four years ago uh, negligence claims by tenants that were injured and my opponent paid $310,000 in a settlement which, which he doesn't seem to remember. And uh, there were also drug sales on the property which uh, New York City finally had to sue my opponent after they okay. were told uh, that they it, it, existed. And, and that's the time for the answer, but I just have one question. I'll give Ms. Cohen a chance to respond, but do you regret using people that in fact were never his tenants and altering, in fact, his properties 
for the purposes of a political ad. Forget the substance, we'll get to that. My question is the visuals, which do matter in an election, do you regret altering them? Well, I, I understand they had to use an actor because they couldn't get any of the tenants to come forward. They were very fearful that if they gave their face or their last name that they might be... Okay, well, let me get... Uh, please, I'd, I'd, I'd is, again ask the audience if we could... That's what happened. 